Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Adam Leach. I'm the director of school counseling at Bangor High School. It's a pleasure to be here with you tonight uh, in my dining room uh, to talk with all of you about um, the transition from grade eight into high school as high school freshmen next year. Um, I've been uh, I've been working at Bangor High School now for 24 years. I was a history teacher before. Uh, becoming a school counselor, and I've been in the school counseling office now for um, about nine years. And um, I was also a boys soccer coach and a JV softball coach, so I've, I've worn many hats, and uh, I think I can give you a pretty uh, good look at all of the different things that happen in our school. Um, in addition to introducing myself, I one of the hazards of doing this from home is uh, even though I have an empty nest, my children are both graduated from college. We have two cats. And I think like many of you, you probably have pets that like to introduce themselves in Zoom meetings. And uh, you, you may get to meet Wembley and Luna at some point in time. Um, the first thing I want to point out to you that looks like there's about uh, 29 people that have joined us so far and others might jump in. I am recording this and I will post this on uh, YouTube and again, share it with counselors and um, you'd be welcome to, to review it at, at a later time if you want to. But in the chat, uh, you should be able to see my uh, contact information. There is my email address uh, and the the second link is uh, well that the the one link that's in there is uh, Calendly, and that is a link to schedule a Google Meet meeting with me. Uh, you can go on that website. You can schedule a time that's available that I have open, and it populates right into my. Um, <laughs> again, the cats are in the background making noise. Uh, it populates right into my um, into my Google Calendar, and it saves you your time. One minute. <laughs> that was one of the cats uh, wanting to do dishes. I was hoping that he'd want to do dishes. But anyway, Calendly is a, is a place to go for you to be able to uh, uh, schedule a meeting with me if you want to talk specifically about any issues or concerns um, that you might have uh, as a student or a parent in your particular situation. And that's the best way to do that. So I said, it automatically sets up a meeting. Uh, it reserves a half hour time slot and, and, uh, and we can talk things over. So what I would like to do is I've got everything divided into about five, you know, 10 to 15 minute sections. And I'd like to stop at right about seven o'clock. And, um, and, and, and then at seven, if anybody has any questions at, from seven on, as long as it, it takes to, to answer those questions. But feel free that when a question pops up, you can write it right in the comment section. And then, uh, I can go back and answer those questions um, at the end, okay? So with that said, uh, I'm, I'm gonna jump right in and talk a little bit about uh, uh, these five things. I'm gonna talk about the curriculum and, and the things that you're gonna be able to learn at Bangor High School. Talk about extracurricular activities, clubs um, and, uh, and sports, as well as uh, the schedule and what the day looks like at Bangor High School the environment at Bangor High School, um, and also the process of registration. Uh, some of you might be joining from outside of, of the city of Bangor uh, and go to middle schools other than the Cohen School or the Dowdy School. And so uh, you'll have um, a registration process to go through. It's very simple, and I'll, I'll be talking about that. The first thing I'd like to, to get into is the curriculum. The, the curriculum is, um, I think, probably one of the most diverse uh, anywhere in the state in terms of, of what we have to offer. With almost 90 teachers and over 400 sections of classes, 
that enables us to do a lot. Uh, for those of you coming from outside of the city, uh, Bangor is your biggest choice. And I've said this to students uh, that, I've, that I've spoken to, uh, the size of Bangor High School does give it a lot of flexibility to do a, a lot of cool stuff. Um, so, so that's an important thing to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is there is, um, we do have levels. So for example, there is, as a ninth grader, you're going to take uh, an English class. And that English class can be an honors class, a level one or a level two. Um, that reflects the difference in the amount of independence and teacher support that you need. So if you think about um, you know, a scale, and on one side you have uh, the student independence. If a student is very self-directed, works very well independently, is motivated, uh, and can work at or above grade level, then probably an honors course is, is good. Uh, a level one is kind of a standard uh, at grade level, two to four year college aspirations. Um, and uh, most of the population of students will be a, a level one. But if a student uh, requires a little bit more teacher support, uh, may have to work exceptionally hard to keep up to grade level, uh, then a level two may, might be a better option. So on the two sides of the scale is independence and, and support. It's very important that you know that this is not, um, this is not tracking. Uh, there, are, there are lots of buzzwords in education. Uh, tracking would be if you were told which level um, you had to take. But ultimately the student and the, and the parent has the final say and can uh, choose which one they feel is best. It's important to know that nobody knows the student any better than uh, the parent. And so there is a lot of choice in deciding what level um, an individual is going to take. Uh, you don't have to take the same level in every subject area. You can mix and match based on your, your abilities, your strengths, uh, um, and your challenges. Um, the other thing that comes with choice, though, is advice. Uh, the school counselors in your schools currently uh, have a good idea of what we have to offer and can provide a lot of advice, but also uh, connecting with us at the high school is, is a good idea uh, when um, having some difficulty deciding uh, which classes to take. Uh, that's another good opportunity to use that Calendly link uh, to set up a meeting with me if you want to talk about um, leveling of courses and what might be most appropriate for your yourself or your son or daughter if you're a parent watching. Um, we are a credit-based school, so a high school is uh, uh, you take classes and you earn credits, 22 credits to graduate. There are 15 required courses, so for example, all students must take four years of English, so that's four credits of English. You have to take three and a half years of uh, math. You have to take three science. You have to take US history and geocivics and, and social studies. Um, you have to take an art. You have to take a one and a half PE. And so what that adds up to is it adds up to 15 required courses. But with 22 to graduate, that leaves at least seven more that you uh, have to choose um, out of all of the options that we have, you can, um, and we'll talk more about what, what kinds of things you can pick from. But that leaves a lot open for students to develop career paths, uh, to enhance interests, uh, to go very much deeper with strengths, and also to challenge and, and take some things that you've never been exposed to. Many of you here tonight uh, may be finding yourself. Um, thinking, I don't know what I want to do after high school. So, you know, kind of don't ask me that. Well, I love it when people tell me that they don't know what they want to do after high school, because they would say, okay, now we can have a little fun and say, well, try this class, try that class. And um, so it, it really strikes a nice balance between uh, finding things that work with your strengths and your interests, but also exploring things that you, you don't even know yet that may become 
strengths or good interests. So 15 required courses and at least seven electives, uh, that gets you to the 22. But if every student takes six courses a year and you can take uh, up to seven and sometimes eight, though we don't necessarily recommend packing your schedule that tightly, um, students can easily get to 24 or 25 credits uh, before they graduate. Um, one of the great advantages, as I said, of, of a big school like this, we have 22 advanced placement courses and nine early college courses that are taught right on site. I don't think there's any other high school in Maine that has 22 uniquely different advanced placement courses. Um, and so students can accelerate. AP means advanced placement. So students can accelerate um, to the highest levels uh, of the things that they're, they're good at and, and interested in. Early college courses are colleges that are uh, run through a university, the University of Maine System or HUSN or Eastern Maine Community College are the, are the three biggest ones that we use. Uh, and nine of those courses are taught by university adjunct faculty who are Bangor High School instructors. And so students can earn college credits without ever having to leave our building uh, and, and can take our classes that way. So if you're working at the high end of a particular subject area, there's, there, is, there is something that is going to challenge each and every one of you. Math is the easiest course, uh, easiest subject for me to be able to demonstrate this. So the advanced placement curriculum goes up to something called AP Calculus Part AB and AP Calculus Part BC. But we actually have two classes that are beyond the AP calculus classes, multivariable calculus and linear algebra that are taught in our building. Being a larger school, we have enough students to fill those courses uh, with enough students to make it uh, financially feasible uh, to do. So, um, so that's a great advantage uh, to, to Bangor High School's uh, curriculum. Uh, when you're accelerated and, and when you uh, really have ap uh, some aspirations and desire to take something a little more challenging, we can keep uh, the most advanced students uh, interested and excited uh, and challenged with courses without having to put you in a room by yourself to learn online, without having to farm you out to a university. Uh, there's a lot that you can do and have peers that are gonna be able to interact with you at the same time. I would also like to say that, uh, um, you know, for the, the same thing goes for students that might need extra support and have ec need extra challenges. Whether we're talking about students in special education, uh, students uh, with, with other kinds of accommodations under 504, or with students that might just struggle with study skills or, uh, or anything like that. And maybe you just have a particular subject that you need extra help in. Um, we can go the other direction as well. There are support study halls, there are, um, as we said, the, the level two courses. So students can still be exposed to high level curriculum just with additional support and, uh, and teacher oversight and involvement. Um, I guess I would like to just very quickly go department by department. The English department this year, um, while it doesn't necessarily impact incoming ninth graders yet, our juniors and seniors are going to have theme-based uh, junior and senior, senior English courses that will address more issues with diversity and, and uh, social constructs that, that impact them to a great deal um, in, in their lives. So it's kind of getting away from a traditional model of, of literature and uh, including some themes that, that will probably excite and interest a lot of kids and giving some flexibility, some choice over what they learn uh, and, and what's important to them. But as I said, English, you take four years of English and even within English, there are electives. Some of those theme-based history, uh, theme-based English classes sorry, can be, uh, uh, you know, so a student can take five or six or seven English classes if, if those uh, excite them and if they're interested in them. In math, I, I really kind of already gave a, a little introduction to math, everything from uh, pre-algebra to multivariable calculus, uh, all things in between. 
Uh, there are three advanced placement courses uh, in statistics in calculus A, B, and calculus B, C. Uh, but there are also three dual enrollment courses. Uh, and I should mention, too, there, there's dual enrollment uh, algebra two, college algebra, and pre-calculus and math. So those are early college courses that they earn college credit for. In English, there is also public speaking in Comp and Lit 1 and 2. Uh, in history, the curriculum requires students to take, uh, as ninth graders, geocivics. It's a half year of geography or a half credit, I should say, of geography and a half credit of civics, which is government. You also have to take a U.S. history course. Uh, and U.S. history, very much like English, this year was the first year uh, that the history department actually did uh, era-based U.S. history courses. So we still do offer the, the general survey of U.S. history that, that tries to go all the way through um, the entire time period, but we have courses from Vietnam to the present, we have the Civil War, we have Civil Rights, uh, we have the World Wars, 20th century, uh, the American Revolution, Native American history. So there's a lot of things that students can take to satisfy their history uh, curriculum there as well. In, in history, we do have the dual enrollment early college classes in U.S. History 1 and 2, uh, as well as AP classes for uh, European history, world history, government, U.S. history, um, and human geography uh, as, as advanced level courses there. There are also lots of other courses that uh, are not advanced level courses that are courses that are designed for interest-based and for anyone to take. Uh, those in, can include global studies, the world history, uh, human rights, and um, um, several others. Uh, GIS, uh, Global Imaging Systems, is another uh, good class that, that you can take there. In science, all ninth graders, uh, unless you're in the STEM Academy, STEM Academy students take a uh, physics class as freshmen, but everybody else will take either an honors level one or level two earth science. Um, and then the curriculum proceeds usually through biology and chemistry uh, to physics, but there are electives that many juniors and seniors take, including astronomy, anatomy, marine biology, wildlife ecology, uh, computer science principles, um, and, and, and a few others that, that uh, I, did I mention anatomy? I don't know. I'm losing track. Anyway, um, uh, so there's a lot to pick from there. Um, in the physical education and health department, every student must uh, take a health class, and you do that as a freshman. And ninth graders and 10th graders both take uh, a physical education course. Uh, Bangor High School offers four different options in PE. There's team sports, which is a traditional type of PE that many uh, of you parents may have taken uh, when you were students. There's also uh, outdoor education. Uh, two of our PE teachers are registered Maine guides, and they, they have translated their skills uh, into um, helping students to enjoy the outdoors. There is aerobics and weight training, which is more individual based. And, and this is one of the things that I personally really like about RPE uh, offerings is that team sports is very collective. It's for the whole group. You join in, you play games and, and activities together. But there's also the, the, the student that may uh, want to work on their own personal fitness and aerobics and weight training uh, is, is good for that as well. And then there is, of course, lifetime activities, which is very similar to team sports, but just um, a, a little dialed down, maybe not as competitive uh, and do things that um, when you're 50, you're still going to be able to do. All right. Um, in world languages, we have Chinese, Spanish, French, and American Sign Language. And this year, for the first time, we're going to be adding a survey, world language survey course where students can in the ninth grade year explore Chinese, French, and Spanish and earn a credit in foreign language. Uh, but if somebody doesn't know which one of those three languages they would like to try, instead of just kind of flipping a coin and picking one, to actually give you an opportunity to, to dive in and, and try a little bit of all three and then move into uh, one of those languages um, in, the, in the subsequent years of high school. 
In art, we have performance, visual, and graphic arts. So in performance, we have orchestra, we have chorus and chamber choir, and we have band. And, um, and we also have theater in performance as well. Uh, so students can uh, choose any of those. I would say also included in performance, we also have classes for students that might not want to be in an ensemble and participate in a, a band or chorus or orchestra, but would like to learn an instrument. So uh, two very practical options there are to pursue uh, piano or guitar. And we have classes where students can learn those. And there's no prior experience needed, uh, nor do you have to purchase any of the equipment to be able to, to do those. Uh, in uh, visual arts, uh, this is painting, drawing, sculpting. Uh, we also have um, ceramics and, uh, and the traditional art one, the, the painting and, and drawing. And again, I, I guess I would also say too, you know, we, we go up to the AP and beyond in, in science with physics, chemistry, AP biology. In world languages, we have the AP levels in French and Spanish. Um, we also have an early college class in, in foreign language with conversational French. That is for college credit. In, in art, we, we have the same thing. Um, there is advanced placement two-dimensional and three-dimensional art. There's AP music theory. So there can be college credits that can be earned in virtually every, um, every subject that we have to offer. Uh, we have graphic design uh, also, so students can take photo, digital art, graphic design. Uh, this is where students attach to the idea of working on the yearbook, so a student-led uh, publication. And uh, uh, they, they do some amazing things. When it comes time to be able to get into the building and take a tour, you'll see a lot of their work around the building. In the business department, uh, likewise, students can take everything from personal finance uh, sophomores now get exposed to a half credit of personal finance, and um, we have introduction to law, we have digital media for business, and introduction to business, accounting, one and two, uh, and we also have AP macro and microeconomics, which we used to just call them one class, but now we've separated them out and students can take both classes separately. Uh, the Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps is also very popular. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Lyon does a good job uh, in, in using the, the Army curriculum for our uh, JRTC program. And uh, there, is a, there are four levels in that, so students can take JRTC all the way through high school if that, if that is a subject that you're interested in. I also briefly mentioned special education earlier, too. Uh, for students uh, that have an IEP, uh, you will be participating in transition meetings if you haven't already. I know some of them are starting and uh, we'll be helping students um, with IEPs in those transition meetings to get schedules that best fit their, their needs through the advisement process of, of the, that, uh, that setup. Um, it's important for me now to mention academies because we do have four academies and there's a, always a lot of excitement and um, enthusiasm around these four academies, but there's also sometimes a little bit of misinformation. Um, like for example, uh, we have the STEM Academy. That is the most, uh, that is our oldest and, and probably our most noteworthy academy um, where students who enter high school have a, a deep passion and an extremely strong ability in math and science uh, and want to pursue a math and science career. So students that are, that are very uh, driven in that area, this is a great opportunity for you to go um, uh, well beyond and really expand your interests in that area. You would use a lot of your elective credits in that area. Um, and so it's, um, uh, it's a great opportunity to, um, uh, to, to really expand on that. Every person in an academy, uh, takes a, a standard, um, introductory course, uh, in STEM, it is, uh, STEM physics. 
And it always culminates in a capstone. So every student produces an individual um, product in, in the STEM Academy. It is a research project, uh, a science fair project that gets entered in many contests. We also have a business academy and the same thing. Intro to business is the, is the base course at the beginning for ninth graders. And it works all the way up through the AP uh, macro and microeconomics as well as um, uh, accounting and other things like that. And they also have a capstone uh, project that they do. The Humanities Academy, which blends together three departments is English, um, history and the foreign languages. And same thing uh, there, but with, with the, the humanities, there's actually a course uh, progression with introduction to the humanities being the first course, uh, the seminar in the second year, a pre-capstone in the junior year, and then a capstone in the senior year, also a research project uh, based in those subject areas. And then of course, there's a fine arts academy and you can choose any of the pathways, be it performance, visual or graphic design. So those are for students that have those deep passions. Now, if you don't join a, an academy, is that somehow setting you back? Absolutely not. Because almost all of the class, there's only a handful of classes that are really geared towards the academy students, but all of the AP classes, all of the dual enrollment classes, all of the rigor that we can offer you is for students across the board. And so sometimes you could possibly, uh, benefit from not being in an academy, depending on who you are, and, and exploring many of the options instead of concentrating a lot of your, um, your, your concern, your, your interests uh, um, through your, your electives, okay? Uh, I'm going to move into uh, extracurricular activities now. We have 15 varsity sports. Um, we have more than that if you separate the boys' sports, girls' sports, and co-ed sports. Uh, but there are 15, you know, like I'm putting baseball and softball together as one and boys and girls' soccer together as one. There are 10 JV and five freshman teams and five sports that are open to everyone. So, for example, track and swimming don't identify as varsity JV uh, freshmen. They're open to everyone. Seven of the, the sports are cut sports where you have to try out. Um, and eight of them are non are no cut sports. So where there, uh, um, there are no tryouts. If you want to play, you get to play. Uh, but all of the sports in which you have to try out, uh, there are sub varsity levels, junior varsity and freshman levels. So for example, I used to coach soccer when I was coaching soccer back in the early 2000s we introduced the freshman team to, to soccer for the first time, and it still is in existence. And so what that means is, is, is everybody that tries out, not everybody will make the varsity team, but everybody will find a place uh, to play. Uh, we also have more than 30 clubs and organizations. And I always want to point out to people that are not as familiar with Bangor High School, we, we do have a lot of notoriety for our athletics, but there are more things outside of athletics for students to do than there are um, uh, inside ath athletics. So, for example, key club, math team, chess team, speech and debate, um, the uh, civil rights team, uh, gay straight alliance, whatever, whatever it is that you're you're talking about. We have a 3D printing club. There is an art club, a book club. Um, There's so many things to do. So. It's hard to say if you're uh, that that you're not going to be able to find something that you're interested in. If you can't find something you're interested in, then you're probably not looking, because there there's a lot going on um, around around the school. And of these clubs and organizations, you know we have athletics, and you know we in athletics we have students that are capable of going to Division One schools and competing at at the highest levels in the, in the country. Uh, but we also have, you know, sub varsity sports where students get still get to compete, but, you know, don't necessarily have to be at that level to find enjoyment in them. Or we have intramural sports. So if you don't really even care to compete against other schools, 
uh, and you just want to go and have fun uh, playing a game after school with friends, uh, then then we have that from pickleball and and uh, indoor soccer, volleyball, uh, all of those things uh, do exist. But if you're the, so we have activities that are, are great for uh, the competitive soul. If you're not athletic, but you still are a competitive person, if you like to play play cards and games with your family, um, uh, the chess team is a great way to go. A math team is competitive. Even in the arts, uh, you can participate in, in a musical, and um, that's not competitive. That's a performance base. But there's also an art uh, art competition called the one the the one act play competition. So if you've got a competitive streak, there's something for you. But maybe you're not a competitive person, and you just want to uh, focus on an issue or an activity, uh, a social issue, uh, or join a service based club that does some community service. All of those things do exist at Bangor High School. Early in the school year, right at the very beginning, there will be um, a um, there will be a, a clubs and activities fair that the librarian puts on that will expose students to all of the options that you have. Uh, I want to go on now and talk a little bit about the schedule. That's a question. A question that often comes up, and I do have to preface this uh, with. Uh, COVID-19 restrictions, um, things may be a little bit different than what I say if, if uh, social distancing uh, is, it carries into another year or if we're able to relax those. Um, but uh, really, we're, we're looking at a couple of different options. The, the schedule that we've always used for many, many years is a 16 mod system, which it's easier to just say it's an eight period day where you have your classes every day, all of your classes every day. Uh, shorter periods, but you see your teachers every single day. That's kind of been the traditional way of doing things. Uh, this year, uh, we've used what we call a four by four block. So if you just take those same eight courses and you have four of them in, in the fall, and then you have four of them in the spring. And uh, that's what we're doing this year. And uh, as of as of this moment, that's that is what we plan to use next year. It reduces uh, transitions. It reduces travel in the hallways. Um, it reduces your your contact cohort. So if there was an outbreak of COVID-19, um, we can quarantine far fewer people uh, and and still keep schools operating. So. That's why we switched to it. Uh, and as of now, the, the plan is to continue with that system. But if, uh, um, if things change, you know, we're, we're still prepared to be able to do that. Um, the, the school day begins at 8. The first class starts at 8. So buses, if you're taking the bus to school, they start arriving usually about quarter past 7. And... Um, uh, but classes start exactly at 8, 8 a.m. and they run until 2 p.m. And uh, uh, so it's a, it's a relatively simple system to, to figure out. Uh, the environment. What is it like to study at Bangor High School? Uh, there are 1,151 students currently at Bangor High School. Uh, we do have about 330 of those students this year that are studying remotely, and about 160 of them are hybrid. Uh, but the rest have been able to attend in person, which is a, um, a kind of a neat thing that we've been able to do this year. And it's it show it says a lot about the community and in, in cooperating and and working together and 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 share with uh, with each other to help meet everyone's needs. Uh, the average class size. This is an important one, especially if you're from outside the school district. Uh, the average class size is 18, and that's in a normal year. Uh, this year, it's 12 with the social distancing guidelines. So uh, in a normal year, you're going to expect to see somewhere between uh, 15 and 22 students in a class. A couple classes might be able to get a little bit bigger than that, and several will be a little bit smaller than that. So it averages out about 18 to one, which is pretty standard for every high school in the area and pretty standard for almost every middle school in the area. 
um, it's a good uh, it's a good breakdown. So even though there are a lot of people in our building, much more than any other high school in this area, we have a bigger physical space. Uh, we have more classrooms. We have more teachers. So um, seldom will you find uh, packed packed groups of people together, even under normal circumstances, without the necess necessary uh, social distancing we're going through right now. There are five school counselors, uh, including myself. There are four others. The freshman class will have two of those guidance counselors, Mrs. Foley and Mrs. Mr. Darespino, will be the ninth grade counselors. You'll have your counselors throughout your four years of, of high school. Uh, and they will work with you with the transition into high school. They'll stick with you all the way through and they'll help with you with your transition out of high school into whatever comes comes next. We have a social worker that works at the high school as well, uh, a school resource officer that is shared with other schools in the district, as well as uh, our school nurse, uh, who's been uh, a godsend to us this year and has done a, a, a wonderful job of keeping so many people safe. In administration, the, the assistant principals, we have two of them, and they do the same thing as the school counselors. You will be assigned a school counselor. Your school counselor will be Mr. Reed. And your, I'm sorry, your assistant principal will be Mr. Reed, and he'll stick with you uh, throughout, throughout high school. And the school counselors, assistant principals, and pr Mr. Butler, our principal, we all work very closely together. Um, we are the student support team. We are in the main office and um, uh, we're, we're all here to help with whatever, uh, whatever you might need help with. Each subject area has its own section of the building. So many people that are unfamiliar with our building and, and uh, our art department right now is produced, working on, uh, they started in January, so that's why we're a little behind schedule, but they're building a virtual tour of the building. And uh, a lot of people wonder, am I going to get lost? And, and the, there's two kind of going jokes about is, do people get lost at Bangor High School? And one is, is that uh, the upperclassmen like to tell incoming freshmen about the swimming pool on the roof and um, to see if they can make anybody look for the swimming pool on the roof. There is no swimming pool on the roof. Uh, but kind of the... the um, the other going uh, joke is that you know, whenever we're asked a question, has anybody ever gotten lost at Bangor High School? And the answer is yes. Lots of people get lost at Bangor High School, but we always find you. Uh, you, can, you can't get too lost. Uh, uh, there is nobody that is still lost at Bangor High School. Um, so yes, it's a, it's a bigger footprint, but one of the things that you'll uh, you'll see as a benefit of that is all of each subject area is in one place. So all of the math classes are in one hallway, and it's a straight hallway. Uh, the numbers of the rooms go from uh, 111 to 123, and all of those are math course uh, math classrooms. The other direction of the hallway from one uh, 110 down to 101 are history classrooms. If you're downstairs from that, English is all on one side and the foreign languages are on the other. Science has its entire wing, both upstairs and downstairs. You're gonna find that most of the biology is downstairs and most of the chemistry and physics are upstairs. The gym area and health uh, all in one place. Uh, it's, it's very easy to, to find your way around. And there are shortcuts too. Um, so, when the bell rings and everybody goes to the hallways, not everybody has to take the same route to get from one class to the next. Uh, so having staircases and, and ramps and catwalks to get to your, uh, to your next class, there's, there's plenty of room to move around. What I like to say is the, is the elbow room. The elbow room that you have is about the same as you have at Dowdy, maybe even a little bit more elbow room uh, than at, at the middle schools. Um, but uh, I've visited all of your schools, Glenburn, Center Drive, Holbrook, wherever wherever you're coming from. I've been to All Saints. And um, when I think about crowd factor and I think about being cramped in and, and not being able to, 
to move around and are you going to be a ninth grader and get trampled by upperclassmen no you're going to have you're going to have just as much room as you do now at the schools that you're you're currently in um so uh go, going on from that safety uh, i know parents have a lot of questions about safety um there is video surveillance in the hallways uh, and in the, the outside near the entrances of the building. Assistant principals, principal um, can, can see from their offices all of those spaces. Uh, so all of that is monitored very well. We do have hall monitors. We do have people that um, keep, a, keep an eye on the safety and, and well-being of people when they're outside of the classrooms. Um, Doors are locked. Uh, you know all of those protocols that schools do to keep people safe. Um, uh, we we do. Uh, the the school resource officer, uh, the Title IX uh, service person uh, are all all in a central located place. The school nurse, counselors. Um, we are very easily accessible uh, from any point of, in the building. Um, transition. Coming to high school, uh, you, as I mentioned at the beginning, you're going to have um, all of the students in Bangor uh, schools are getting um, help right now from their counselors. If you're from an uh, out of district school, then uh, you'll be able to use those uh, either my email or the the Calendly link to schedule appointments and uh, and make the process work out for you. Um, registration, and now if you're if you're currently attending Cohen or Dowdy, uh, your name has already been rolled over and, and I can already see the list. So you are a Bangor High School student. Uh, if you are from any other school other than uh, the Cohen School or the Dowdy School, you will have to fill out a registration form. There is no application. If you want to come to Bangor High School, you can. We will have something that fits your needs and your interests. So um, we, don't, we don't turn anyone away. We are a public school in the truest form that way. Uh, so the registration form is very simple. Uh, you can either request it from me or from uh, your school counselors at your school. Uh, and once we get a uh, registration from you, then we will connect probably the uh, Calendly and set up a Google Meet so that we can uh, get to know what you want to do when you're at Bangor High School and pick classes. Uh, so that's that's a very very uh, short uh, a short process. When is the deadline? Uh, the deadline is kind of you know, it's a rolling deadline. That means the sooner the better. Uh, we can get you set up and get you connected and and take care of you. Uh, you know, bef certainly before summer. Uh, and, and get you ready for, uh, for next year. Um, and I guess I'm, what I'm going to do is I, I went a little faster than I, I anticipated. Uh, there's still about 40 people in, in, the, in the group here. I was wondering if anybody has any questions, and I think maybe now would be a good time for you to type into the chat. Um, looks like we already had some guests that uh, know that the chat works. So uh, parents, uh, especially, I'd love to hear from parents. I know that you guys will um, uh, have a lot of questions on your mind. If there's any questions, I think now would be a, a good time to start popping those into the, into the chat box. I'll give, you, I'll give you a couple of seconds. I'm gonna take a little sip to catch my breath and then um, maybe answer a few questions. So there is a question about, can I list the cut sports? Yes, um, in the fall, uh, soccer is a, is a cut sport, field hockey. Um, golf kind of is, uh, any, uh, it's, they, golf usually takes everybody to the, to the meets. Um, and it's a basis of where, you know, your top five scorers, regardless of how many people you bring, uh, 
So that's in the fall. In the in the winter, basketball is a cut sport. Ice hockey, uh, cheering both in the fall and in the in the winter are cut sports. But all of them have JV teams, and most of them have freshman teams as well. Uh, in the spring, baseball, lacrosse. <coughs> baseball and softball, I should say, and lacrosse and um, uh, tennis. Uh, and I believe I believe that's it. I think I've got all of them. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Are all AP classes one semester? Right now, yes. Uh, right now with the four by four block schedule, the AP classes, uh, because we're using a block schedule, the classes are much longer. So there's half the number of classes, but each individual class is twice as long. So it's the same amount of time. Um, so right now the AP classes are one semester only. And most, you know, it works out better for students if the, uh, it depends on the AP class, I guess I should say. Uh, but we try to get as many of them in the first semester as possible. But we don't want to overload students. So we do try to sprinkle some of them uh, along the way. Um, do students in the Humanities Academy take introductory course freshman year in addition or instead of freshman? They take it in addition to the freshman English. So the Intro to Humanities would be one of the elective courses. Um, so typically as a freshman, you're going to take a math, an English, a science, uh, geocivics, health and PE, and then typically one or two uh, other electives. Uh, usually, if especially if it's a humanities student, you want to take your foreign language, and then a seventh class would be the intro to the humanities. Another thing to, that's important to consider, too, is humanities, you don't have to make that decision now. You could come to high school and kind of get in and get acclimated to high school and then start the uh, humanities academy as a sophomore. All of the academies are starting to add onboarding options for sophomores uh, because it, it might be a little bit much to expect fresh, all, for all eighth graders to make up their mind uh, before entering high school to participate in something like this. Um, uh, are you able to speak about uh, taking two math classes during freshman year? This is a really good question. And um, so math, it's really important. I, I don't want to get too long winded about this, but math is the one subject that you should probably treat different than the others. Um, math, it's so much more important to have a strong foundation. So if you're taking algebra one in the middle school and you get a C in Algebra 1. When you go to the high school, I would recommend uh, for anybody, unless you got an A, I, I many times recommend that you retake Algebra 1 as a, as a ninth grader. That will make you so much stronger at Algebra 1. And then as you go up to Geometry, Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus, Calculus, that math base, that foundation will, will strengthen you in all of the levels. If you enter high school and you overplace yourself and you struggle, there's a good chance that that struggle will continue with you. Just like if you've got a strong foundation, if you've got a weak foundation, uh, you're going to continue with some difficulties all the way through. So, um, so if somebody's taking Algebra 1, right now in the eighth grade, and they say, well, I'm, I want to take geometry next year in high school, but I, I, I think I need to brush up on my algebra one first. Take algebra one in semester one, especially if, you know, certainly as we're going towards this four by four block again, taking algebra one in the first semester and then taking geometry in the second semester, you certainly can do that. Now, when, if we end up taking classes at the same time, doubling up on Algebra 1 and Geometry might, it, to take them at the same time concurrently might be a challenge. That's where we should schedule a meeting and talk about what's best for the individual person. Most people that ask the question, though, about taking two math classes are people that are looking for doubling up on Geometry and Honors Algebra 2. And it's doable. It's rare. 
there's only a handful of students that do that at, in any given year. Uh, but with the block schedule, it makes it more practical. Uh, and I've had conversations with the math department students about this. Um, so taking uh, geometry in the in this in the fall semester and then algebra two honors in the second semester can certainly that can certainly happen. Uh, I'd also say this: it doesn't have to be in the freshman year. It could happen in the sophomore year. So. Um, it, it's important to understand readiness. It's important to understand the overall workload that the individual student's gonna have um, because uh, uh, piling things too high, uh, while students may able to be able to do confidently any individual task throughout the day, uh, the accumulation of many rigorous things can be overwhelming. So each individual family, each individual student is probably going to have a slightly different answer to that question. Uh, that's why uh, an early meeting is, is something really valuable to have. So I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, so uh, already in common since there. Um, Yes, uh, if your student is at Cohen or Dowdy, uh, you're automatically going to be enrolled. If you're a resident of Bangor um, and you're at those schools, uh, you're automatically going to be rolled over into the high school. The only exception that I'm aware of to that is if you are a superintendent's agreement. So if you are attending Bangor schools, but you are a resident of some other town and you are here, um, either as a tuition student or as a superintendent agreement, um, there, there, there's another step to that process. But any resident of Bangor going to a Bangor school, everything's going to be taken care of um, um, as we go. Um, when will I know the schedule of classes and, and when they're offered? Uh, the, the master schedule is... is um, is being constructed as we speak. Uh, we are within, uh, we are already having uh, Bangor students uh, register for courses. And um, so that's, um, that's moving along. As far as when we will know um, kind of like this stop dead date, as far as will we be doing the four by four block, um, we're, we're looking at making sure that by the end of the school year, uh, we this school year, we know exactly what the plan is for next year so that we don't run into something like this year where we were kind of at the last minute making decisions uh, to deal with uh, social distancing. We, we do have an advantage of time uh, right now. So we will, we will know before the end of the school year uh, what next year's strategy is going to be. Uh, there is a public speaking college uh, class that we do offer at Bangor High School. Yes, it, it's uh, the early college uh, public speaking. It's Communications 200 at the University of Maine at Fort Kent. Um, clubs and activities, there is a uh, uh, going to be a, a clubs and activities fair right, right out of the gate, right in September and students will be able to explore all of the options and, and sign up for them. So the club advisors and some of their student leaders will be, um, will be working to uh, recruit, the, recruit students at that act, at activity. So we can also certainly, you can email me or you can uh, set up a meeting with me and we can, we can um, explore some of them if you wanna get a, get a jump start on it too. Um, do I think band will be both semesters or just one? Uh, the, the class will be in, uh, if we do the four by four block, the class will be in, will be in one of the semesters, but we are exploring other options, uh, to see if we can extend, uh, that throughout the year. Um, so that is still something that's in development. It, it is a concern that we are very well aware of that, you know, a performance class like that is really, there's so many activities throughout the year. We want to make sure that band, orchestra, and chorus students have access to all of those things throughout the year. So whether that is as a club or activity that's an extension of the class, or if it's actually um, 
a class that, that goes into both semesters. We're, we're still working on that. Uh, dance options are, are definitely a part of theater. So the theater academy, if somebody is really interested in dance, I, I would encourage you to take a look at the theater um, uh, pathway in the Fine Arts Academy uh, because that involves musicals, uh, it involves performance, and, and somebody with a dance background would, uh, would be a really good fit for that, I think. Um, Uh, seven subjects. Um, so, what if you just join the meeting and you want you have questions about uh, you know the the classes? If you go back to the very beginning of the chat, my email address and the link that says calendly.com/bhscounselor/parent will take you to a scheduler that will allow you to set up a Google Meet with me. Uh, and we can talk about um, preparation, uh, study skills, anything like that, that, uh, that you might have a concern with where students taking on a very rigorous uh, course load. Uh, the theater program, it, uh, the question about does theater uh, do their own performances uh, or are they through the drama club? They work hand in hand. So I would say that anybody that's in the Fine Arts Academy in theater is also in the drama club. And that's gonna be a, a big core of the students that will be involved in, in any kind of drama club activity. But um, students don't uh, have to be in the academy to be in productions. Um, it, it is something, the production in the drama club it, it, to get more students than just the, the core group of students that are in, um, in the academy. So um, it kind of goes, it kind of goes both ways, right? So these are all really great questions. I, I'm, I'm really glad you guys asked them because this gets at kind of um, what makes Bangor High School really that there are all of these options that students have to really pursue some um, pursue some amazing things. And uh, taking advantage of APs, early college academies, um, as well as uh, the, the wide variety of things that you can do, it makes my job really fun when I can custom design something to fit an individual student. Every single one of you that is listening tonight has a little bit of a different story. And I'm, I'm very confident that we can put together a, a plan, not just for what classes you take next year, but a graduation plan. And we will do that when the first, from the first time that we meet. We will be exploring uh, what are you going to do after you leave Bangor High School? Uh, from the student that walks into my office and says, I want to be a doctor. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a business person. When somebody is definitive, like we can get you going. When somebody says, I have no idea what I want to do. That's, that's good too. And because nobody expects you at, at 14 years old to know exactly what you want to do. So um, we can custom design. If you have a super strength in one area, but you struggle in another area, we don't, you know, not everything has to be rigorous. We can, we can take you from where you are and get you to where you want to go. The only thing that we ask for is cooperation, a good attitude. Uh, the people making the comments in the, in the, that, that are trying to joke around, that's not a good attitude. Right. But if if somebody really wants to take advantage of what we have, the sky's the limit on the things that that you can you can do. So um, and that, that's really fun for me. So the, the, uh, another one of the little jokes that we have with 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 freshmen coming in from the eighth grade is from the day we meet you, we start planning for the day to get rid of you. Uh, and that that day that we get rid of you is graduation. And but we might get rid of you in in the physical sense, but um, we are so very proud of our graduates and all that they're able to accomplish going to amazing schools. This year's seniors, 
We've already got acceptances to the University of Chicago, to Yale, to Stanford, um, uh, Yale, Stanford, um, Yale, Stanford, University of Chicago. Um, yeah, I mean, so they're they're rolling in. This is a little bit early, but uh, some of those some of those are, are coming in. But we're we're just so proud of, of all of our kids. And um, I, I'm this year. I, I want to just divert for a second, if I can, and, and just say how proud I am of the staff. They they really are an amazing group of people. It's an honor to work with them. Um, they have gone above and beyond to make sure kids are, are, are getting as much as they can get. It's a tough year when, when teachers are working doubly hard and it's, and it's twice as hard to get back to uh, normal in our outcomes, but they're doing, they're doing a wonderful job. On top of that, if you were to walk, if you could walk through Bangor High School, um, you're going to see 99.9% .9 compliance with masks. You're going to see people that are, are doing the things that they're supposed to do to keep each other safe um, uh, and being respectful to the teachers. And, and it, it's, it is a, there is an expectation. And when your ninth graders come in, they see the expectations. They see the expectations living out in the way the students behave. Um, they see um, the, the calm and confident leadership of their teachers. So um, it's a great, it, it really is a wonderful, a wonderful place. Um, uh, one other um, question, if, if students join an academy and change their mind, uh, can they swap academies? It's challenging as you move along. So what I would say is, is um, that the opportunity to, to change academies would have to happen probably no later than in between freshman and sophomore year. Any later than that, you're not gonna be able to get the introductory, because in, the, the, the academies are very rigorous, uh, especially STEM. And uh, jumping in late um, it isn't, isn't going to work really well. So if you have a, a person that is interested in, in more than one academy, I would recommend scheduling an appointment with me and, and talking about those interests and seeing what you can do uh, to make those work. All right, another really good question. Thank you. Well, I'm not seeing any. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat. Uh, I'll just pause here for a second, and uh, if um, if there's any last minute questions. Certainly, um, certainly share them. Well, with that, I guess I, I would, um, I'm gonna close and I'm gonna say, uh, stay safe, uh, be diligent and, and keep each other safe. And um, the, the more compliant we are with, with uh, with social distancing, I think the, the stronger our chances of returning to normal uh, for September are. And I look forward to hearing from all of you. I look forward to seeing all of you students uh, coming up and joining us in, in a short period of time. Uh, and um, certainly reach out to me uh, or to any of the Bangor High School staff if you have any questions. You're also welcome to go through your current school counselors in your current schools and they can pass along uh, any information. So if you miss my email address, or if you forget it or lose it, uh, you can always contact your current school counselors and they can, they can help you out, okay? So with that, again, uh, this, this presentation will be posted uh, and uh, I, will, I will send the meeting, uh, the, the link along to the, the school counselors and, uh, and, uh, and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you so much for your participation and have a wonderful night and have a wonderful remainder of your current school year.